Let's go, sweetie. And search it. This is Oakley. Let's check here. The curious canine has a way of sniffing out secrets. Oakley will check low. She'll check high. She's done it for years alongside her handler, Michael Davis. Good work. Together, the duo makes up part of The Last Chance Let's or TLC Canine Services and the Worried Parent Program. Oakley, let's check here. Davis and his dogs dig for drugs and what's called a sniff through the home. So a lot of parents want us to just indulge the sniff in the bedroom, but we always want to sniff the rest of the home as well as vehicles, the perimeter of the home, because children tend to hide things away from their bedroom. It was on a sniff like this that they met Steve and Allison Luckett. We live in a nice neighborhood. It's not gonna happen to us, and it did. The couple had noticed their teenager was sleeping a lot more, and talking with him had become more difficult. He got very, uh, um, contentious a lot, especially towards his mom. Uh, you could tell that he was he was starting to act out. A call to TLC K9 revealed the disheartening discovery. What really struck me was when he brought the box down and he opened it up. It was way more dangerous than what we thought it was. Different kinds of drugs found in his bedroom and hidden all around the house. There was remnants of stuff outside. There was stuff in a flower pot and a cooler. That's scary. Are you ready? Search. Since the first sniff in 2015, Davis and other handlers have gone inside more than 900 homes, finding heroin, fentanyl, spice, syringes, ecstasy, pain pills, and more. Most parents call us thinking that their child may be dabbling in marijuana, and when the dog ends up finding opiates inside of the room, you see a jaw drop effect. We see a substantial amount of pills. We see a substantial amount of syringe users as well, even when they're 15 or 16 years old. The worst amount of drugs we've ever found inside of a child's home was six ounces of marijuana. That's more than 150 grams of marijuana. And this was a child that was dabbling and selling. Davis pointed to even more problems during the pandemic. We were contacted by over 350 parents. And in 300 of those homes, we were capable of finding narcotics. In 200 of those homes, we were capable of finding opiates alone. In a study by the National Institute on Drug Abuse, 11,800 students from 112 schools across the country were surveyed. Results showed that daily vaping of nicotine and marijuana had slightly decreased among 10th and 12th graders from 2019 to 2020. However, the misuse of amphetamines like stimulant drugs has increased among 8th graders up 1.8% from 2016 to 2020. We're going to have more um, teenagers struggling in school dropping out of school. Henry Lucas started struggling with substance abuse at 12 years old. By the time I was 14, I was full-blown addicted to drugs and alcohol. I was using methamphetamines, ecstasy, uh, marijuana daily. Um, and that progressed and, and progressed until um, I found myself um, using um, prescription drugs. Sober for more than 12 years now, Lucas recently opened his own business, Louisville Health and Healing. He and his staff work with families to try and keep kids away from the path he took at such a young age. Being explorative and being curious about ourselves is a part of our growth as people, but depending on the environment that this is happening in, it can be detrimental. He says conversations about drug abuse between kids and parents are critical, but seem to be too scarce. Families are not quite sure what to do or how to handle, you know, the situation. And search it. That's why after every sniff, Davis sits down with a family and explains the next steps. We have to remind them that these are children and that children make mistakes. Mistakes he hopes to keep his own son from making. I'm a father myself of a seven-year-old boy and I created this program to help his future. The Luckets say they've seen a change in their son since the sniff more than a year ago. Being able to to have a resource of somebody that really knows what they're doing brings you some confidence that, yeah, we can take this on. But they know it's an alarming trend not exclusive to their household. 
or even their neighborhood. The drug epidemic hits every single side of town. They believe law enforcement and organizations within the community need to work together to combat the crisis collectively. Lots of families are going through it and we could all use some help. If Davis and his dogs do find drugs in the home, he tells the parents how to dispose of them. The organization cannot remove the drugs themselves. He can also keep the house calls anonymous if you prefer. For Focus, I'm Heather Fountaine.